Once the home of Spitfire fighter planes, Pembrey and David is now the location of the Welsh Motorsports Centre. A lap of the circuit takes in just about every challenge a racing driver can expect to face. From the start line, the dash down to the right-hand hairpin always guarantees an exciting opening lap. The Friday before the race saw a number of teams taking the chance to get in some testing on a circuit which many of the drivers had never seen before. Among those taking part, the arrows of the Source Racing Team, still in the same livery it sported when Ricardo Patrese drove it on the Grand Prix circuits of the world. Comparing notes are former Leib stalwarts John Narcissi and Peter Thurston. In the paddock, a Surtees Formula One car sits alongside the turbocharged Beatrice, 14 years its junior. Does team driver Richard Peacock think Pembrey is the right venue for a Formula Leib event? Oh yes, definitely. I, I love this place. I think it, it's super. It's one of the nicest circuits to drive on. It's one of the most demanding. It's one of those tracks that you feel if you drive a bit, bit, bit better, you go a bit faster. And uh, all these long, fast sweeps, really, uh, especially in a Formula 1 car, are uh, absolutely tremendous fun. It can be fun in a Formula 2 car as well, especially if, like Peter Thurston's March, it has a turbocharged Mazda engine in the back of it. Meanwhile, however, Richard Peacock's Surtees is sounding distinctly off song, and that means he'll be campaigning the new arrows on race day. The challenging combination of left and right hand corners, which make Pembrey a popular testing venue for Grand Prix teams, also attracted a strong lineup of powerful single seaters when the Midland Automobile Club played host to the Welsh Racing Drivers Association Formula League Championship. Formula Leap has long been home for a variety of cars, including powerful Formula 1 and Formula 5000 machinery. And such was the interest in this Welsh event that two races had to be laid on for a category where the focus is on friendly rivalry. After testing, it's back to the paddock and the tender loving care of those unsung heroes, the team mechanics. Race day and the single-seaters share the paddock with a variety of machines, both large and small, set to take part in the nine-race programme. Time then for the fastest cars of the day to show off their paces as the bigger engine Formula Libre cars line up for their practice session. One man who has made a long trek to Wales to no avail is Tim Barry. Mechanical problems sidelining his Formula 5000 Trojan early on. Try 
trying hard is John Narcissi in another Trojan as he records the fourth fastest time to claim a place on the second row of the grid. The front row being claimed by the source racing entries of Don Wood and Richard Peacock. A super grid of cars. Uh, Don Wood's got a turbocharged Beatrice Lola, which produces something like a thousand horsepower. Uh, Richard Peacock's running a, a Formula One Arrows ground effects car. Uh, and there's a variety of 5,000 cars here as well, which are in the sort of 600 sort of horsepower range. So it, it should be a super afternoon. And these are cars that have quite a long racing history behind them, presumably. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, my car was raced by Jody Schechter in America in 1973, and it won the American uh, Formula 5000 championship then, yes. So do you get many opportunities to race these cars these days? Uh, no, virtually none at all. It's, it's a great shame. Uh, we're very grateful to the Welsh Racing Drivers Association for this opportunity, and uh, I understand they're uh, pushing very hard for a championship next year, and uh, I wish them every success. Is Pembe a suitable venue for this sort of racing? Uh, yes, it's uh, a very complicated circuit. Uh, it's, it's very challenging indeed. Super place. Move on to the feature race of the day. And missing from the front row of the grid is the Beatrice Lola, who will start from the back of the field following mechanical problems. A sluggish start then by the arrows of Richard Peacock allows Rick Hall to take the lead ahead of John Narcissi, but Peacock is soon fighting back. As Peacock quickly opens up a comfortable lead, attention turns to whether he can claim the special prize on offer to the first man to lap Pembre at an average speed of 100 miles per hour. Although the leaders are soon well spaced out, a larger than usual crowd of spectators are still treated to the sights and sounds of the biggest grid of Formula One machines ever seen in Wales. Richard Peacock has a comfortable lead now, but he still has to be on his toes as he tries to pick his way safely past the back markers. An easy victory then for Peacock, but it could have been a very different story if Don Wood hadn't been plagued with mechanical problems. The Beatrice Lola driver eventually managing to claim fifth place. Yeah, fill that with beer, yeah. <laughs> 
so it's Peacock who takes the laurels, although he just misses that prize for a 100 mile an hour lap. Second is Rick Hall, while John Narcissi takes third spot after just holding off the march of Peter Thurston on the line. And some fine glassware to grace the respective trophy cabinets, courtesy of the Welsh Racing Drivers Association. I think absolutely, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, John. As they head off for their lap of honour.